Hey everybody, what's going on? Um, wanted to make another video real quick here about a uh, new charger that I got. Um, I was looking to get a new charger because uh, I wanted to be able to charge more packs at once and maybe do it a little quicker. Um, what I've been using is, you know, Old Faithful here, a lot of people have seen this. Um, does the job great, but uh, it is limited at how much it can charge at once, the amperage is only at six on this guy. So uh, I wanted to get an upgrade, so to speak. So um, went with the ISDT Smart Charger. It's the SC620 500 watt 20 amp. Um, so yeah, honestly, is it gonna put out 20 amps of charging? Only if you are feeding it uh, a lot of power to charge from, which I do plan to do because I picked up a couple server power supplies there so I'll get those wired up together so that they can uh, do a 24 volt output and by supplying that much power to the charger I should be able to get a full 20 amps of charging if I needed it um, as it stands I currently have a little uh, ATX power supply from a computer that I use for uh, the other charger and so 12, out, 12 volts coming into this I'm, I'm probably going to be limited to how much power I'll actually get out of it, but it'll definitely be more than six amps that I get out of the uh, the AccuCell that I have right now. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this real quick, um, do an unboxing of it. I picked this up from GearBest. I want to thank GearBest for sending this over to me. Um, let me show you the box real quick here. Um, really looking forward to getting this going. Revolution starts here. So we'll let's see what it looks like inside here. All right. So as you can see, it's not very big. Um, there's a size comparison. I mean, uh, it's kind of a square shape, but length and width is about the same size as, as one of these. But you can see it's a lot. It's a lot smaller. I mean, it's a very portable package, and. Uh, you know, sits there pretty cool like that. Um, let's see what else is in the box. So you got your instructions. Not much to it, but um, they are in English. Kind of just shows you the features of it. Sorry, shows you the features and some specs. So we'll, we'll have the specs come up right here. We've got. Uh, it'll take an input voltage. DC voltage, of course, between 9 and 32 volts, so that's quite a quite a range. Output voltage on the charger is going to be up to 30 volts. Charging current, like I mentioned, is up to 20 amps, uh, so provided you're giving it enough uh, input power. Uh, it'll discharge up to a 5 amp discharge, so that's pretty healthy. Um, maximum power that this charger will put out is 500 watts. Uh, it'll max out at 15 watts when it's doing its discharge cycle. Um, it can do up to 6S packs, and there's a couple features on here that uh, we'll go over in a minute. It does have a USB port, so you can output um, a 2.1 amp USB charge over that, so you can be fast charging your cell phone or something off of this. Um, the display on the item here is about 2.5 inches. It's a 320 by 240. We'll power it up here in a second, and you'll see how nice that looks. Uh, if you care about the weight, the unit itself is 289 grams, and it looks like it's about 115 millimeters by 130 millimeters by 52 millimeters. So, not very big, but it's uh, quite an interesting design. So, one of the cool features that uh, I was really happy to look at is your input power. It is all set to use as a field charger um, you know there's no other typical little 5 volt barrel connector to power this up you're going to use an XT60 what do you have with XT60's all over it is battery packs so this is perfect as a field charger especially if you go ahead and invest in a really large capacity battery pack you get that thing fully charged take it out to the field like a, like a 5000 milliamp or uh, 10,000 milliamp hour battery um, you could charge all day off of that 
well not all day but you know if you got a 10,000 milliamp hour pack you could charge your thousand milliamp packs for your little 150 size multi-copters you know you could do like 10 of those packs so let's um, go over real quick over the features again so you've got a USB port there for the um, cell phone this is an out you know for outbound charging this this isn't for any kind of interface that's what this link is for um, we might go into that later the link is going to use like a uh, I don't know if it's a three and a half millimeter or a two and a half millimeter plug but um, it's it, like a headphone connector right so it plugs in there so they make a little tool that you can um, use in here or you can make your own there's a few videos out about how you can make your own tool for that this is where you're going to be able to um, plug in and update the firmware for the charger um, here's your output battery um, battery charging port and your balance lead port right there if we look on the bottom some venting you can see there's a there's a little fan in there so when you start getting a little too hot fan will kick in uh, from what I've heard you pretty much get it up to about 60 C and that's when the fan will kick in uh, lots of venting on that here's your control knob it's a one knob interface so clicks up and down very light clicks don't know if you can hear that and then to make your selection you'll just click it in so that's the basics of it, it might be it might be a protective plastic on here I can't really tell it looks a little scratched up so yeah probably I'll peel that off later um, anyway get this powered up and see what the display looks like it's gonna be very simple okay I'm gonna power this up just using a uh, a 2200 pack I have just to show you the uh, the interface how that works on here so that was a real quick load up there and since there's no battery connected read not reading anything let's go ahead and do a little 3s pack on here first we'll go with the battery checker and see what it's telling us for voltages Okay, 11.4, we got a 3.8, 3.8, 3.79. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this guy in here. Okay, so now it's reading voltages. Hopefully we can see that there. 3.8, 3.8, 3.8. So we're within 0 0.01 of the battery checker. So who knows who is more accurate, battery checker or little chip and circuitry in here. I might default to the charger. Okay, so we'll back that up. Go ahead and plug this in. So if we hit the Just press the button in. Now we're out to the main menu here. So going back would show you the battery. Start would be a charge. Task is our charge. So let's see if we can get in a little closer there. Okay, so there's our options. Uh, charge, discharge, and storage charge. Okay, so what we have learned from um, other people. Uh, talking about this charger and the other little pocket charger that they have ISDT um, there isn't like a balance charge option because it automatically does it so basically you put it on charge it's gonna fast charge at whatever um, you know amperage you set based on the C rating of the battery it's gonna fast charge it to the and, and beep first when it the it peaks out at the you know as a full charge however that may not be a true balance charge so if you just let the battery sit there longer it will uh, do a balance charge for you and then so you'll a little bit later you'll get a second beeping of the charger to tell you that it's done so we got charge discharge and storage it's real easy to manipulate with this knob and then you just push it in 
for the option you want. Um, what kind of battery are we working with today? Well, we're working with a LiPo, but you can see it does high voltage LiPos, lithium ions, lithium uh, fer well, I always forget what this one is, fer ferrite, something like that. LIFV batteries, basically. Um, which, that's good, because I have one of these for the uh, power pack of my Tyrannus. Uh, lead, and then nickel metal hydride. So you have quite a few options there. Already auto detected that I'm on a 3S battery, but you can see you can go up to 6S. Um, all right, how how hard do you want to charge that sucker? In 0.1 increments, it's going to go up. So since it's a 20 amp charger, suppose this should go up to 20, and there you go, and that's the one. All right. So if we were charging 1C here. 1.3 would be where we want to be for that and then it just hit start and we'll see what that charging screen looks like so you can see you get a little information here on the screen 56 percent up here this would not be the status of the battery you're charging but actually the status of the power supply you're feeding it so in this case it's reading um, power off of the uh, that 2200 pack that I'm powering the thing with. So basically we're transferring power from that 2200 pack into the 1300 pack. Um, so shows us how much power we've pumped in so far and the voltages of each of the cells. So uh, I just I thought this was so cool. I mean you know the, the the four button chargers are great you know they do a good job they have for a long time and they show you the same information on that little screen but this is just a lot nicer to look at um, and then manipulate you just have a dial a button no pressing and holding it to you know start your cycle and do the check and all that stuff um, this thing will do an auto check every time you power it up so if you generally like to leave the battery that you're charging um, connected to the charger and then apply power back here on the uh, the input side um, it is not going to start charging right away because it does a self check so uh, you would have to pull out the charging battery and plug it back in again so that's a that's a small small um, hindrance or annoyance that's probably the better word annoyance however that is addressed in the in the latest firmware update and that's another cool feature of this charger is that you can go online and download a, a new firmware for it and uh, uses that little link port here on the side and you can update this thing so they may add new features to it um, you know maybe alarm different alarms or different uh, voltage cutoffs whatever so it, it expands the functionality of this charger I just I think it's a really good deal I like the form factor I like how small it is it's so portable um, and it's easy to read it's just it's just really cool so let's see if we get out of here we can stop the current charge go back in there so we can stop what we're doing because this one's basically full we're not we're just kind of over peaking it here so let's go back there um, I'm gonna stop this all right let's go back to the mult main menu here and we'll see what happens when we hold it maybe that'll get us into some other sort of menu yeah Oh, there we go. Yeah, so on the main battery screen, you press and hold it, and you get some other settings here. So you can uh, adjust how much you're ever going to be feeding it, so you don't get into any kind of uh, emergency situation there. Um, what's, what should it be looking for on the minimum side? I guess perhaps it would work down any lower, but 9 volts is probably where you want to leave that. Um, backlighting. We'll try to we'll go to we'll put it down on low see what we can see okay you know, so it did change a little bit um, middle yeah high okay so that's something to think about when you're out in the field powering it off of a small pack um, maybe turning down the back lights and stuff will uh, give you that just a little bit more a little bit more time on that pack um, the, I guess this would be the beeps yeah kind of changes the tone I like the high uh, English is 
English and uh, I don't know, like two different types of Chinese maybe. And then here's your firmware setting. Okay, it's looking for a uh, yeah, upgrade failed because I don't have it connected right now. So that's cool that you get into these settings. Oh, sorry, there's some more here. OS info shows us where we're at right now as it came out of the box. Um, doesn't look like the firmware or it doesn't look like any of that is keyed to a, a date that you can you know tell what time of uh, year it was. So. You just have to go on to isdt.co to look for a new firmware. Uh, what else we got? Self-test and then back. Uh, let's see what self-testing does. Do not connect the battery. Yeah, remove the battery. Come on. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so let's try this again. You can hear the fan kicked on. Okay, doesn't give you any other info besides pass or fail, but uh, I don't know, I guess that's good. Like I said, it may be in firmware up upgrades, you will get more functionality through here. So let's go, go back. Here's our main battery screen. So again, this is the uh, ISDT SC 620, 500 watt, 20 amp charger. I think it's a good deal. It has a lot of functionality, easy to use, and has that awesome option of being powered off of battery packs you already have. So you don't have to necessarily hook up to your car battery or bring out a deep cycle or rig something up off of your um, your car battery posts or the lighter socket in your car, whatever. I mean, everybody's got battery packs, and if you put a little money into it and put a big old battery pack on there, that thing could last all day. So... Um, this has been the ISDT 620 charger. Got this from GearBest. Want to thank GearBest one more time for that. And uh, I'll have links down in the description to um, to this product on their website. So if you want to pick one up, you can go right there and get it done. If you have any questions about this charger, go ahead and leave them for me in the comments. And I'll do my best to answer any questions you have about that. So again, thank you for watching. Um, please click like and subscribe to the channel. You can see more videos about quadcopter and RC products. I appreciate you watching. Thanks very much. See you later.